home to Beyond the Pain, a place for parents of estranged adult children to find peace and healing. In each episode, I hope to share stories to help you during some of your darkest hours, to bring this out of the shadows and stop being ashamed, then to build you up and inspire you to love yourselves even more. Hello, I want to start by reminding you that I am not a therapist or a doctor. I'm just a guy who's been there and wants to help you have a life past our estranged children. If you need mental help coping with this or have thoughts of hurting yourself or someone else, please seek professional help. Today I want to deal with how you deal with relationships with other people. We all have that issue when this starts. You know, for me, from the very beginning, it was difficult to be around other people. I always dreaded that question. How are your kids? Or how's your son? Or how's your granddaughter? I, I never had a good answer. I want to tell you that it's completely normal to have these feelings. Um, think about it for a second. This is one of the most important relationships in your life. I mean, you gave them life. And and when I say you gave them life, I mean, even, even people that have been adopted, I, I consider that the same thing because, you know, you are their parent, especially when it's from such a young age. You gave them a good home. You did the best you could. For many of us, for 18 or more years, for, for a lot of people, way more than 18 years, um, then for a lot of us, one day out of the blue, silence. No more contact, almost like a death in some ways. Give yourself a little bit of a break. Other friends that you have, they'll really never understand unless they've been through it. From that point forward, even after you might reconcile, you doubt your ability to have a relationship with others. Uh, you find it hard to get close to people, always wondering, what will you say to make them leave? Even though those people will likely not leave, even if you do socialize, you'll find you can't allow yourself to get too close. It's much easier and safer just to keep to yourself. Give yourself, a, again, give yourself a break. Sometimes it might feel better, in many ways, just to be cut off from the entire world. It feels that way in the short term, that's for sure. However, in the long term, I personally don't think it is. Now, if you always have been a hermit, then that might be okay. You have to be you. You have to be true to you, whatever that is. And again, no one who hasn't lived through it could ever really understand. We can't really expect them to. I mean, could you if you hadn't experienced it yourself? I couldn't have. And nobody, you know, your friends always want to try to help. They want to comfort you. We really don't want to hear, just give it some time. Because to us, it seems like it will never end. And many don't. I have lots of friends in the group that I'm a part of, that as the estrangements have gone on for years and years, I mean, some of them 10 or 15 years, you know, they have lost all hope of finding that reconciliation. But just know that, you know, your friends or, or people around you, they are trying to help, even though it doesn't help, really. Um, it's not their intention to upset us. It's just kind of human nature to try to make you feel better about what's going on you know, and to give you some hope. That's my thought. You know, you also worry about people judging you. 
you know, like you always feel like they are going to say, what did you do to cause this? Certainly a child just doesn't leave for no reason. But, you know, we know that's just not the case. I mean, could we have done something differently? I'm sure. But, again, we've done the best we could. We did the best we could with the knowledge we had at that time. You know, some of it has to do with our own upbringing. Some of it just has to do with our personality, you know, and the child's personality. So, could we have done something? I I'm sure. I'm sure I could have done something differently. You also have to remember, there's really, and I think I've said this in a in one of my previous um, uh, episodes, that there really is no parent handbook. Every kid is different. Every adult is different. Um, you also have to remember that the way you handle one thing, you could put the exact same situation in front of another person, another parent. They'll handle it completely differently. And the same goes for the kids. So there's no perfect answer. Yes, we shouldn't abuse our kids. We shouldn't berate them. We should allow them to be themselves, you know, all of that stuff. But in the end, you know, you never know what is going to set off a person, be it your children or a coworker or any, I mean, you just don't know. So you just have to remember that everybody handles everything differently. So it's nearly impossible, if not impossible, to, you know, avoid some of that stuff. A lot of us just avoid social situations altogether so that we don't have to discuss it. It's, it's difficult. It's, it's, it's hard to be around other people. It's hard to keep a happy face. There's times you just want to go and either be mad or be sad, lose yourself in a book or a TV show or a movie or somebody else's drama. I personally like to watch a lot of, you know, court shows, not like um, reality court shows. So I just enjoy, you know, kind of losing a few minutes in these people's dumb drama. So uh, whatever your thing, you know, that, that is, that's you. I'm here to tell you too, even when you reconcile, uh, as I mentioned before, it's never going to be quite the same. There's going to be situations where, man, I shouldn't have said that, or, or should I say that? Social media is a killer, you know, should I repost that or regret that you posted something that'll cause a division? Unfortunately, you know, as great as social media is, it's also not. And I mean that it's, it's not great sometimes. You have to be very careful what you put out there sometimes especially if you have friends that might go one way or the other on certain subjects. It, it's hard. There's a lot of divisive topics out there. And just because you feel a certain way on something and your other friends feels the complete opposite way, sometimes that causes some real division. It shouldn't. But it does. And the same is true for your um, estranged children or your ch children that aren't estranged. So you, you just never know how that's going to work out. When you do reconcile, though, like I said, you, you, you sometimes you feel like you can't have a good relationship. Sometimes you can't. 
Sometimes it won't be like it used to be. Sometimes it's not. Um, and sometimes it is. You know, it, it's just... It, it's hard having relationships with people after you've gone through this. So having a difficult relationship with people, sometimes it makes you feel like you might never get out of that depression, you know, or you may never be able to have a positive relationship with somebody. To an extent, it's it's up to you. You have to decide that you've gotten to the point where you want to get past and and be able to have a relationship with other people. It's difficult. It's very hard to do. You may not be able to for quite some time. Some people may not ever be able to the way they once did. And you know what? If that's the case, do the best you can. That's all you can do. And that's okay. You know, you don't have to be sad forever. You may have to compartmentalize some of the stuff, some of your relationships, some of your issues, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you are in this sad place for the rest of your life. You know, you should always allow yourself time to cry or be angry or go through whatever the stages of grief that I mentioned in my last episode was. I've seen enough people going through this that I really believe it's a form of PTSD. Again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a professional, but in my limited knowledge just from going through it myself, I believe that it's a form of PTSD because you get those triggers that, you know, might set you off and might send you back down a dark road um, seeing people with their grandchildren out and about. That did it for me. When I was going through it, it was very difficult. I did recognize it. It took me a, a little time, but I did recognize it. So I was able to articulate to my wife and to myself, you know, what was bothering me. So that was helpful. I, I really do believe uh, that that's a part of it. You know, it can be like a death in the family. It really can be a death or a divorce. You know, it's a separation. You know, all those things, there's a separation. So... It certainly can be something like that. So that's hard to deal with. You know, the the other thing to remember, and, and it's really, really, really hard, just because they leave doesn't mean you are a bad person. Doesn't mean you're a bad parent. It doesn't mean you're evil. It just means that, for some reason, you guys, you need to be apart from each other. So, back to the, the encompassing topic is having relationships with people. If you have other people in your life, it hurts the relationships with them, too. You know, your, your other family, your other children. You know, I've heard of instances where the parents, the mothers, the fathers, I know I went through it, couldn't function. They couldn't pay attention to the other kids in their lives. Fortunately, I guess for mine, my child that was still living with us wasn't terribly young. She's pretty self-sufficient. So she didn't, like, depend on us for everything. But there's lots of situations that that is the case. So I, I'm here to tell you that I just feel like it is pretty normal. All of these different feelings that you might be going through, 
all of these different situations, all of these different attitudes that you might end up getting, I, I think they're pretty normal. I think the the key in my estimation is you have to work through it. You have to do the work on you. Doesn't matter so much because you can't control them. You can't make them come back. You can't do the work for them. You have to do work for you. And if that means, if that happens to mean that something you do benefits your future relationship, great. But you, you have to be able to take care of yourself. There are many instances where you'll need to, you'll need to be able to be around other people. You'll need to have relationships with people. You have to figure out a way to try to move in that direction so that you can function. I know it's not easy. Never said it would be. But you have to put forth, put your, put your, put one foot in front of the other. You just have to put one foot in front of the other. If you can do that, and you can slowly start to pull yourself up, slowly start to take care of you, then at least you will be in a better place for yourself. Like I said, you're, you, you can't do this work for them in order for them to come back to you. It's not going to work. I don't feel like. If there's something broken in you that you feel like is broken in you that might be a reason something happened, great, work on that. I just don't feel like you can try to fix yourself for them. But again, it's very important to be able to have relationships with other people. It's not easy. This is a sucky time. Um, it's just not easy. So we all understand. Anyone who's been there has un understands. And you just do the best you can. So that's my two cents. If you have any stories you want to share feel free to drop me an email. My email address is beyondthepainpodcast at gmail.com. So until next time, remember to allow yourself to live beyond the pain.